So today we want to talk about magnetism. And in the Western world, this began about 2,000 years ago, where rocks in magnesia, Greece, were found to have these really weird properties. They were later called lodestones, L-O-D-E, stones. And you can see where the word magnet eventually came from, from magnesia, Greece. So jump ahead a bunch of years to about the 1820s and this professor named Han Christian Orsted, he was in his class and he was demonstrating a circuit and he closed the circuit, but he had, I'm sorry, he closed the circuit, but he had some compasses sitting on his lab table. And he noticed that when he closed the circuit, it caused the needles in them to deflect. So he recognized immediately that this was significant. The story says that he canceled class and everyone away and he started studying this. And he's the one that discovered this relationship between these two things that we thought were not really related, magnetism and electricity. And eventually we find that they're very married together, uh, that they go hand in hand. So similarities to electricity, the things that we've studied in electricity, it exerts a non-contact force. You know that I could have two magnets, a north and a south, a north and a north, and they repel or attract based on what they are, which means that there is a field around them. Because remember that any non-contact force has a field. The strength of that force depends on the distance. So the closer you get the magnets, the harder they're going to push against each other or the harder they're going to attract together for that. And then the further away, the less that force will be. Then they also attract and repel because there are two parts. Now, in this case, in electricity, we have the positive and the negative. But when we talk about magnets, we have north and south. So opposites attract, like poles repel is the way it goes. Differences from electricity is that you can get one electron by itself, but you can never get one pole by itself. And one of the ways that I kind of analogize this to is if you picture us having a magnet here that has a south and a north, you can think that there's a top and a bottom to this magnet. And if I were to split the magnet in half trying to get the, the bottom by itself, wouldn't that new piece still have a top and a bottom? And wouldn't the top one here still have a top and a bottom? And so what that will do is it will create a north pole here and a south pole here. We just can't get those. Now, there's a lot of cutting edge science that is getting really, really close that we think we can get it. Uh, there are some experiments where uh, they believe they've gotten it for like really fractions of a second. Uh, and that's one of the really exciting new areas of physics that's being studied right now. Because if you think about it, there's a whole lot that would be really, really cool about that. Like I could line my room in a north, put on a south or I'm not a south, put on a north jacket and then jump into the room and kind of float in the room because I would be attracted and repelled. Or I could line if we're in like a, a warehouse, I could line the floor in a north. I could put the bottom of the skid in a north. And then instead of needing forklifts, you could just like gently push it because it would levitate or float. Uh, across there. If you picture like back to the future, when he goes in into the future and he's on this skateboard that hovers, that's the hoverboard, it could be something like that. So similarity, kind of what I just drew. So if I split that in half, I end up with those. If I split that in half, I end up with those. I'm not really ever going to get that north and south by itself. So magnets and electricity, we have electrons and magnetic fields. Uh, and what, if you remember from chemistry, this idea of electron spin, well, that's really what causes magnetism. So magnetism is caused by the spin of the electron. So as that electron spins, then you could think of, so if I draw a picture here, so here's my electron and it's spinning this way, its axis of rotation would be kind of down through here. And you can think that that one end of that axis is going to become the north and the other end is going to become the south. So the change in motion causes that small magnetic field then, I'm, I'm sorry, that charge in motion. And then many electrons spinning all in the same direction produce what we will call magnetic domains. So you could kind of think this is like each of the electrons is like a city and then the domains are like a state. So as we get all of the domain, these electrons in certain cities spinning the same way, we get this sort of state or this cluster of ideas that are together. So it's the cluster of aligned electrons spinning in the same direction. And then we have a really strong magnet if all of those domains are lined up in the same direction. If all of those domains are lined up kind of in the same direction, we end up with a weaker magnet. And then if all of those domains are just random all over the place, then what they end up happening is they end up canceling out. And that's why even though you have something like maybe my desk or the desk that you're sitting at, it, it all has spinning electrons, but the way those spinning electrons are aligned, they're all canceling out, so there's really no magnetic field caused by it. But if you get a bar magnet, all of those spinning electrons are in general all kind of in the same direction, and so that's what's causing them to uh, be magnetic. 
So stronger magnets have more aligned domains. So here, for example, how strong are these magnets? So if I look at this one, notice that all of these different arrows or all of these different spinning electrons are all in different directions, which means that that's going to be a really weak magnet. They all sort of tend to cancel out all of those vectors. Then if I look at this one, notice that it's still kind of random, but as a whole, notice that a lot of the arrows are pointing that way, that there are very few of them pointing to the left. And that's what makes that a stronger magnet than the one above. And then if I align all of those in, a, in the same line, then you notice that that's going to become a really, really strong magnet. Now, there's something else that you might notice here, too, that as you've been doing your wind turbines or your speakers, and we talk about strong magnets, they bust really, really easily. So a lot of times, the stronger the magnet, the more brittle it is. And that should kind of make sense on a molecular level, because if these are all lined up, then don't I have these really, really nice lines where it would be easy to snap that magnet along those lines where everything is lined up? So magnetic field then, the symbol for it is an uppercase B. Can't use F because F is for force and we can't really use M because M is for mass. And a field remembers the area around an object that affects other objects. So if it's a magnetic field, it's the area around a magnet that affects other magnets. And notice how we drew this here. I have a North Pole, a South Pole, and it comes out of North and into South. We measure the magnetic field in Teslas, named after the dude Tesla, uh, the same dude that the car is named after, the car Tesla. And then is it a vector or a scalar? Well, you can already look at this. If it has arrows, it has to be a vector. So the rules for drawing it, these are really, really similar to the rules for drawing electric fields. They have to leave perpendicular. They come out of north and into south. Technically speaking, this one up here comes all the way up, all the way up here and around. And this one goes all the way over around and around and around and around and comes in the other side. They don't technically end. They just get so weak at the top that we wouldn't draw it. And then lastly, again, the more lines, the more lines, the stronger the field. So this is almost exactly the same other than positive and negative. This is north and south. The field is definitely strongest at the poles. It's going to be strongest at this point and at this point. And anywhere you get away from that is weaker. Even in the center of the magnet, it's weaker than at the very ends of the poles. And then we would say that the magnetic force is what is caused by the magnetic field. So any forces that are, are upon another object here is caused by this field that is from that. And the way we would, would mathematically describe that is F equals QVB. Now, I don't have a sample problem here because all of the problems that we have you doing are really simple plug and chug problems where literally it gives you like, here's the force, here's the charge, here's the velocity, find the magnetic field. Or here's the field, here's the velocity, here's the charge, find the force. It's basically plug and chug into that one equation, F equals QVB. Don't forget that the charge of an electron and a proton is the same. It's the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Uh, and then negative if it's an electron, positive if it's a proton. So what I want to do here is I want to talk about the first right-hand rule. It's the direction of the magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity in the field. So if F equals QVB, if B is a vector, V is a vector, and F is a vector, then we need to figure out how to figure out the directions for these. Now, it's going to be interesting because all three of those are in perpendicular to each other for what we're studying, which means that no longer do we have a just a north, a south, an east, and a west. We're also going to have one, and this is really hard to see, one that's coming out of the screen at you and one that's coming into the screen away from you. <laughs> so from your perspective, this would be into the screen. And from my perspective, this would be out of the screen, but it would be the other way around if you're picturing it as look, looking at the way we did. Uh, so way, the way we'll do that is we'll use the dots to represent out of the screen because you can think if a, a vector is represented by an arrow, then when it's coming out of the screen at you, aren't you looking at the tip of the arrow? Then we'll use X's to represent going into the screen. So an X represents into the screen because on the back side of the arrow, won't you be looking at the crosshairs as the arrow is going away from you? And that's kind of how you can remember that in and out. So the out is the dot. You're looking at the tip of the arrow and the in is the, is the crosshair of the arrow that's the back side of it. Okay. 
So the first right hand rule is in three is for three dimensions. So you'll often see this as like this, where you have all three dimensions represented by your fingers. You'll notice that when we start doing this, I like to do it this way, where I have my fingers in one direction, my thumb in one direction, and then my palm in a direction. And the reason I do that is because it's going to tell you the direction of the force. So what we'll do is we'll have our fingers go in the direction of the magnetic field. Because there are multiple arrows in the direction of the field, there are multiple fingers. That's an easy way to remember it. Then your thumb goes in the direction of the velocity. You can think that this makes a V between the two of them. So the thumb is your velocity. And your palm then is going to be the force. So you can picture as if you're like pushing on something. And that's how we get the, the uh, why I do it this way. Because you have either you're pushing on something or something is pushing on you. So the palm is the direction of the force, either out of the palm or into the palm. Your fingers are the field and your thumb is the velocity. And then remember our saying out of positive into negative. So if it's a plus charge, the force will come out of the palm like you're pushing on it. And if it's a minus charge, the force will come into the palm like it's pushing back on you. Uh, I'm gonna pause here and then I'm going to show you a couple of these on the board so that you can see, see some of them. Okay, so for the first right-hand rule, the first thing to remember is it's the right-hand rule. So all of you right-handed people, you have to literally put your pencil down and use your right hand. Lucky lefties, you can keep writing with your left hand and use the right-hand rule, but that's the most common mistake as I see people keeping their pencil and using their left hand to do the right-hand rule, and they're like, I'm not getting this right, why not? Because you're using the wrong hand. Okay, so right hand. Now remember we have our directions, north, south, east, and west, and it's gonna be kind of goofy because you're looking at it on the screen. And then we would have out of the board and into the board. So what I'm doing is I have a proton, and in each of these cases I took a proton, and I have a proton that's being shot into this magnetic field here. So I have this magnetic field, all these X's mean there's a magnetic field. So remember, fingers field, thumb velocity, palm force. Fingers field, thumb velocity, palm force. So I'm gonna take my fingers, which are multiple fingers, in the direction of the multiple arrows and put them into the direction of the board. Then my thumb goes with the velocity, so I'm going to turn my thumb so it's pointing in the same direction as the, of the velocity. And remember that's out of positive into negative. So because this is a proton, out of my palm would be that way, as if I'm pushing on it that way. So my answer for which direction would the force be on this problem, I would say that the force is going to the west. Okay, next one. Again, I have my multiple arrows, which is the field, go with my multiple fingers. So I'm gonna put my fingers this way. Then I have the velocity, which is going this way, and my thumb goes with the velocity. So I'm gonna turn my hand. So my thumb goes in the direction of the velocity, my fingers go in the direction of the field. And then if this is a plus charge, it's out of my palm, so it would be that way, which is going to be into the board. And that would be my answer into the board. Now, one of the things you can notice is, remember we said how these are all gonna be in the three dimensions? So because the, the magnetic field here is in the Z direction and the velocity is in the X, Y direction, then I know that my answer has to be, I'm sorry, in the Y direction, then I know that my answer has to be in the X direction, either positive X or negative X. So if I can't get my hands down, at least until I can, I can narrow it down to a 50-50 chance on what the answer really is. So in this case, notice that I have the, y, the X axis, I have the Y axis, my answer has to be the Z axis, which is either the in or the out, okay? So looking at this guy, all of the dots, remember dots mean out, and the multiple dots go with multiple fingers. So I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna point it out of the screen or out of the board. Then I have my velocity that's heading towards me, so I'm gonna turn my hand so my thumb is towards me. Sometimes this gets really awkward. And then if this is a proton, then my, my charge is going to get pushed that way, the way that I would push it, which is going to be which direction. So that's the force and it would be in the direction that is north. Then lastly, see if you can get this one. I'll take a moment. So remember, we could narrow this down. If I already have the magnetic field in the Y axis and the velocity is in the X axis, then I have a 50-50 chance. My answer has to be either into the board or out of the board, right? Then I'm gonna take my right hand rule and do this. So I have 
the multiple arrows, multiple fingers going this way. Then I have the velocity is heading to the east. So I'm going to flip my hand around. I'm going to come over here because it will be easier. I'm going to flip my hand around this way. So now my fingers match the, the magnetic field. My thumb matches the velocity. And if this is a proton, it's going to push with my palm that way, which means that my answer is going to be out of the board. Okay. That is the right hand rule in a nutshell. And then we have some other videos where we walk more through it and do some more examples for that.